Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, that's good. Welcome to PHLY Flyers presented by Mortgage CS. Check out mortgagecs.com slash PHLY to start your home buying process today. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. My name is Bill Matz. I'm your director of fun and games for the evening. Joining me today, back to back days. That's how lucky we get. Honestly, we're going to talk about some trade rumors today. Yeah. Wouldn't mind making this trade. But no, while Charlie is out, we've had some uh, we've had some fun with Kelly Hinkle returning for a second consecutive day, Broad Street Hockey's own. You sure you're not going to be doing the Broad Street show every week? No. Oh, all right. They're doing it tonight, and I'm already like, I Oh, they're can't. doing it tonight? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Decided to wear the best jersey in Flyers history while Charlie's not here to yell at me. The best part of this, it's a multi-level troll. Yeah. Because you're wearing the black jersey. It's also Mark Recchi. And it's a Mark Recchi yeah. jersey. That makes it especially fun. I had to confirm. After. <laughs> First jersey I ever bought. This one right here. After you went on the Mark Recchi rant, which uh -huh. I was on the very first Broad Street Hockey show. I did. Uh, so I was glad to uh, glad you broke that out and glad <laughs> you broke out the jersey today. Before we get started, I have to, uh, I have to acknowledge a wrench in uh, a potential wrench, potential in, my, wrench. in my plan to uh, to offer sheet Elias Pettersson. Um, got this from at Chasing the Puck last night. Just a heads up, Bill. You said on the show today that if the Flyers end up with three first rounders, they can use three of those as part of the four you'd need as compensation to offer sheet Elias Pettersson. But you can only use your own picks so we would be surrendering the first rounders in 24, 25, 26, 27. I did not know that. So Who I'm, could possibly uh, keep up with all these rules? I'm glad to have learned something. Uh, I guess if I'm going to try to come up with a rebuttal, it's you can always make swap backs. So, yeah, like, someone actually with, tweeted you later. And with gave Michael you a Remberg or with the Chris Gratton offer sheet. Like, they made the swap, and then they were like, here's a bunch of players. Can we have some of those picks back? Yeah. And that, ha and I always think it wasn't an offer sheet situation, but it was always the plan, probably, in the Peter Forsberg trade. Probably, yeah. Like, all right, you want to go on your run, so you need Hartnell and team, and then keep them, send us a pick, and then uh, we'll send it back to you, and you're going to give us those two guys. Like, that's how I always figured it was predetermined. I could see that. Uh, so there's always a possibility. But, yes, technically my idea of, oh, well, if they have three first-rounders, it only really disrupts one draft. Incorrect. Uh, so thank you for teaching me something at Chase the Puck. Uh, so we have some rumors flying around, we Kelly. Do. It was funny. I mentioned a trade bait list yesterday, and then, like, when we got done the show, the actual TSN yeah. Top 40 came out. I was like, oh, nice, okay. Just in time. Um, so I want to get into that. First, I guess the big news around hockey is that uh, Elias Lindholm goes to Vancouver, traded to Vancouver for what appears to be pretty good haul. Pretty uh, good. Some prospects, a first-round pick in there. Yeah. So it's starting to look as if... You know, pieces are starting to fall, and this affects the Flyers in a couple of ways. First and foremost, Darren Drager says the center market is relatively thin, uh, thin. Hence, the Flyers are taking calls on Scott Lawton. They're not eager to trade him, but Danny Briere is gauging the interest. So I, I, it's hard to believe that the value is remains from last year and the summer, especially when it was rumored a first-round pick for Scotty. Yeah. Uh, that said... Man, I really, really like Scott Lawton. Um, but I mean, at, at, what is he, two more years at three mil a year? And if his play... Now, he's 29. There's a good chance his, this is just a down year. And he rebounds and is a lot more like what he's been over the last four. He was never the guy who scored 18 goals last right. year. Like, that was a mirage. He's not an 18-goal scorer. But his value was at an all-time high. If they move him now for less than a first-round pick, is that a failure of Danny Breer? No, not necessarily. I mean, it's it's very easy to go back in time and say, yeah, should have traded. Um, but first of all, those were rumors. We don't know for sure that that happened. Um, and also, with the whole culture thing, I think Scott Lawton's pretty important to the room. So it, like, it kind of makes sense that they didn't want to move him unless they absolutely had to. Um, Kurt, friend of the pod, Kurt from BroadStreetHockey.com. Please like and subscribe. Um, 
he wrote an article recently about trading Scott Lawton and how about the fact that any team interested in Scott Lawton is probably not interested in Scott Lawton because they think he's going to score them a bunch of goals. That's the, like, we always, well, his value's so high, he just scored 18 goals. Like, if me, fan of the team, yeah. knows, like, okay, but he's not really that good. He's just playing on the second line because the Flyers don't have six top six forwards. Right. Like, that's just kind of what happens. You're going to score 18 goals when you're playing 20 minutes a game. GMs around the league probably know, like, oh, it's the same Scott Lawton who usually scores 12, and he's playing six more minutes a game now. Yeah. So uh, I guess if someone was willing to offer you a first-round pick, it it can't possibly be because, oh, well, he scored 18 goals no. last year. That means he's an 18-goal scorer. No. And I feel like Lawton is, like, Kind of like the platonic ideal intangibles guy that general managers love. That especially if you're going on a playoff run, that like veteran presence, the locker room leader, like that that kind of thing, I feel like is a lot more valuable to a lot of NHL GMs than we want to admit because it seems very stupid <laughs> that it's valuable <laughs> but to them. No, honestly, but, like I'm just thinking now about his overall value. Like on a team with no captain, he wears a letter on his sweater. Mm -hmm. And that like Somehow, just no, oh, almost knocked over the mic. Professional broadcaster. Uh, somehow, the, like sewing a letter on his jersey mm -hmm. increases his value. Of course, it does. Like that automatically makes 100. him more valuable mm -hmm. than if he wasn't wearing it. 100%. The exact same guy. Yeah. So, should they trade him? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because here's the thing. If he has dropped off, like if this version of Scott Lawton is the version of Scott Lawton that we're going to get for the remainder of the contract, I don't know that the intangible locker room thing outweighs the fact that when he's on the ice, like he's he's not just invisible. He's like actively bad this season. And the penalties that he's been taking have been a real problem. And it's just like, if you can get an asset for a guy that is negatively impacting your team pretty much every single game, you kind of got to do it. Is there a part of you, because yesterday I said, you know, like, do they owe it to the guys mm -hmm. to bring in a backup goalie to see if you can maybe just stabilize, like not save the season, take them on a cup run. Like, don't, I'm not saying they're going to go get UC Soros or like Mark andre Fleury or something, Yeah, but just like, a guy who isn't an 890 in the AHL goalie the way Cal Peterson is. Mm -hmm. right. And maybe just, and it's like, yeah, but for what really? Right. Like, but Scott Lawton is more than, like, it's not just the on ice stuff. Mm -hmm. He's such an integral part of this, we're told, as a leader, as a culture setter. For sure. Could it have, like, considering what the return might be, some mid round picks or something? Is it worth losing that over, you know, they already have four seconds over the next two years. So I think that the the Flyers are, I don't think they want to trade Scott Lawton, which is why they didn't trade him in the summertime. So I really don't think that they would move him unless they were getting something that they were like, oh, you know what, we can't turn that down. So I feel like if you're looking at like a late second or something, I don't think they'll take that. Like that doesn't seem like enough to me. But if you're getting a first, mm, Kind of hard. I mean, to even turn that like, down. it's hard to turn down a second in my mind for Scott Lawton, like a 29 year old, no, I know, bottom six guy. Uh, he I, again, I really like him, and it's just the idea of a first is so enticing now. It's like if they don't get that, it's a disappointment. But still, like any return for him. The other thing is, like, I, I, in terms of him being a culture setter. So what, is he just going to be here forever? Well, that's the thing. Like, You've said this he's before. He's 29, and it's not... He's not going to get better. Right. He's only going to get worse from here. Yes. So are we selling him at the absolute highest value? No, that was this summer. Mm -hmm. But, like, now is better than no. just letting his contract expire in two years, and he's just here, and there's no real reason. Right, and at some point, like, we're going to be bringing in a bunch of new players, theoretically. Yeah. Like... The culture has to be, you have to just consider it set at some point. And I think that the like way the- Like Owen Tippett needs to be the leader right, now. Right, exactly. Like like you've said a thousand times, how many torts guys do we need to have? How many culture guys do we need to have? Like at some point you have to say, okay, culture, we did it. 
And I think that the way that the organization is being perceived right now and the way the team has played this season, it seems like the culture has been pretty well ingrained top to bottom. So, like, I don't know how much more culture work you need to do. And, I mean, these guys are professional athletes. They know that people get traded, and they know that this team is in a rebuild. They've heard the coach say out loud, yeah, you're going to lose people. The coach is saying it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't really think it'll be that detrimental to the room if they happen to trade him. I just, like... At a certain point, you are going to need to open up roster spots. Mm -hmm. And we, they've already re-signed Ryan Paling. That seems to make Scott Lawton like a little bit expendable. Yeah. I think Lawton can play probably higher in the lineup more consistently than Paling. But basically, Paling is year, a though. younger face. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> yeah. it's not happening right now. Yeah. Like Paling is a younger, faster Scott Lawton. That's mm -hmm. what you're looking at him. Like they re up Owen Tippett. You have the young guys, Tyson Ford, like Tyson Forster, Bobby Brink, Sam Amala. They're all going to be in this lineup at some point. Mm -hmm. How many, like, uh, Sean Couturier can't go anywhere. Like, it's right. just not happening, right. especially not anytime soon. Yeah. There's only so many spots. Like, you're going to have to open some up at some point. So I can, I can see with this being out there that they might be considering it more strongly than they did over the last couple of years when it was like, yeah, we're getting offers, but yeah, like it, it seems like to me right now it's, well, why not? Like yeah, what, right. It, you're gonna, he's not going to be here till he's 35 years old. No, like he's already maybe declining. And that's a, that's a question we have later in some mailbags. Yeah. It, it might be best to just do it right now. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't, like I said, I don't think they'll give him away for nothing. But I do think that if they get a strong enough offer, they're 100% going to jump on it because they would be stupid not to. It's that's what you do in a rebuild. Like, yeah. Exactly. And that's another, we have a question coming up later. That's like, what have the Flyers done other than trade Provorov and talk about it to make you actually think they're going to rebuild? I know we're going to get to it, but I'm like I annoyed by that question. I know already. you're annoyed by it. That's, when I, that's why I wanted to get to it. Because <laughs> I thought like, that is... It's hard to interpret tone on the internet. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, the second way in which the Lindholm trade affects the Flyers uh -huh. is people are seeing this return for a 29-year-old. Now, granted, he's a center, yes. uh, but he's not exactly having a career year, not exactly the player he was maybe a few years ago. Uh, but you see the return, first-round picks, some really good prospects, and people think, ooh, Maybe you need to explore that Travis Konechny thing again. And we talked about this yesterday. Yeah. But just does when you see this return for Lindholm, is it like, oh, yeah, I got to rethink my idea. Like, or is it, well, yeah, I always expected a lot. That's why I want to trade. Like, yeah. where are you? And did this trade affect it at all? Uh, it didn't affect it for me. I don't think that this trade in any way, like, sets the market for a Travis Konechny trade. Um I mean, you have to think, like, this is a very specific situation and that Canuck, the Canucks are very clearly going for it. Yeah. Um, they don't, I think, have a ton of futures in their organization, so I feel like this is their time to either do it or, or not do it. Um, so there's that. Obviously, there are other teams in that situation that would probably like a Travis Konechny, but I, like you said, I think that the expectation is always if you trade a player like Travis Konechny – you better be getting a haul. Like, I kind of look at that return, and I'm like, I would like a little bit more than that for Travis Kinect. And obviously, like, I overvalue him yes, because he's on course. my team, and yeah. he's, like, the most important player on the team right now. Um, but, like, if we got that exact package from the Canucks for Travis Konechny, I would be a little bit like, mm, all right, but... I just this. We got a comment from Jim G. Lawton is Damon Lankow. Oh my God! Nothing special. Uh, Damon Lankow had multiple twenty goal seasons though. Damon like, Lankow. He could play. I feel like this is kind of selling Damon Lankow short a little bit. I mean, it's selling both of them short, but he kind of is Damon Lankow. All when right. you think about it, we're like a little bit more. I'm just people like liking had, him. I looked I, I, for something came up, and I was cheating at Puck Doku and looked up Damon Lankow for Unbelievable. something. Unbelievable. And uh, he's had, he had, I want to see it. It's, yeah, goals 15, 14, 18, 27, 20, 21, 25. He had two 30 goal seasons, a 33 and a 30. Like he could, he could score. Yeah. Like Lawton is never scoring 30 goals. Like fair. there is, that's fair. I, maybe if I guess, 
I guess if you put him on like Edmonton's top line, sure. Like put him on their power play and he'd probably get 30. But yeah. I don't think that was the Damon Langhouse situation in no. Calgary in the like, mid 90s, late 2000, mid early 2000s, whatever it was. I like was. remembering Damon Langhouse though. So thanks for that. Yeah, thank you. Love remembering uh, that, some I feel like that's Sel Langhouse a little short. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the like TK stuff, I'm just starting. I don't think this trade. Makes me go, oh, well, now they have to. No, like, I no, don't no, think no. that's what it's doing, but it is just kind of making me go, they have to do it. Like, I'm just coming to grips soon. It's just this thing is not going to take off as fast as we think it is. Yeah. And part of that is the Carter Hart situation. Yep. Goaltending solves so many other problems. We've seen it, it causes, I mean, there's not anything that can sink or raise your team above their yes. actual level. More than goaltending. If you have that guy, you're in every game. Yes. Maybe Sam Harrison will prove to be that guy ultimately. Maybe. The idea that he is right now or might be like next year. Yeah. I, that's hard to believe considering he's got like 60 games of NHL. Like he, or not even like 30 games of NHL experience. Also, like it's yeah. hard to say, oh, well now it's, you know. Yeah, this thing is going to be ready to go even before Mishkov gets here. No. I don't think that's going to be the case. No, and I mean, like, before we had, theoretically, like, a Boston situation with a good 1A, 1B that we were going to have riding into the, the next yeah. few years. And that's even better than having one good goaltender. So the goalie thing being up in the air really does make me take a step back from the oh shit, this thing is better than we thought it was going to be and it's going to be faster than we thought it was going to be because now there's this giant question mark at a very important position. So it does make it a little bit a little bit easier to get rid of TK because if we're looking at like, let's say we're looking at four years now because let's say Arison isn't it. And so then we got to figure out what it is. We're looking at like four years, like maybe Mitch Koff's first year isn't that great. And they got it. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of ways now that it could take a little bit longer. You're like, maybe Kolosov comes over and he's Ilya Sorokin right away. That would be like, nice. That would be huge. I'd be into like, that. It might not be the case. Like it's goalies. Who knows? Mm -hmm. It could be that dude's a fragging that Bjornsson they drafted. Like maybe God, he ends so up being goals. great. They have a ton of goalie depth, yeah. which is what you need. Like throw darts. Cause who the hell knows? Right. So, like, but also a lot of them are Russian. And as I said on a, uh, on the, uh, trending in the AM show this morning, um, I don't know what the hell goes on in Russia. You know, like I these think, guys could just be d d disappear. So here, so, we just had one go to a military jail. <laughs> like that happened in like the last calendar year. But also, I I remember reading an article several years ago that like the Russian hockey machine over there at some point decided that they were going to start making goaltenders and doing whatever like sick training regimen yeah. that they put these poor guys through. And so, like, I feel like throwing the dart at a bunch of Russian goaltenders right now is, like, a good thing to do. I mean, look around the league. Exactly. All of the <laughs> best mean, ones pretty much are Russian. And there's I, three there's really a, good Russians in the state of New York. I know. There, there's a reason why, because, like, they made a, a conscious decision to start cranking out goaltenders. And so maybe we got one. You it's, never know. No, it, it absolutely could be. But also that means, like, the timeline gets pushed back. Yes. If it's not Carter Hart... Maybe Arison just like, boom, he's in there. It's a definite possibility, not ruling it out. Yeah. But like we got a huge sample size and a real long roller coaster ride of Carter Hart before I landed on the conclusion. All right, maybe he's not a star goaltender. He I thought had the possibility of getting there, but it was like you're a starting number one in this league. For sure. And if you put him on any cup contending team outside of like the ones who are carried by goaltenders. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't change their odds for the worst to win the cup. You know, no, like you his could, baseline is you, good. You put him on Colorado yeah. and they're winning the cup. But now that's gone. Yeah. Like he is in all likelihood, they put uh, Carter Hart gets moved to the non roster list today. Mm. Um, if his NHL career is not over, in all likelihood, his Flyers career is over. Almost certainly, like, that's, yeah. It seems to be the way this thing is trending. Yeah. Uh, just from a hockey perspective, I don't expect to, to ever see him play for the Flyers. No, again. probably not. Um, that creates 
uncertainty. Yeah, and now exactly. you have uncertainty. You know, like the Cutter Cutter Gauthier, is he going to be – William, I'm sorry. Yes, William. Uh, Billy Goat. Yeah. Um, like, is he going to be a center? Is he a wing? At least you could – Okay, if everything goes well, that's the other thing that sets C. it back. Yeah, like not you don't that have that guy. Stupid. You dickhead. might not even have the D. Like, yeah. yeah, Jamie Drysdale's real good. Is he top pair number one? Don't know. I, I don't know. He's twenty one years old. Yeah. It could be. Maybe. But like, it's real hard. Yeah. It's real hard it to be one of those hard. guys. Yeah. And like alongside of him, like him and Sandheim as a top pair, that doesn't that doesn't do anything for him. No one's I don't Alex see Petrangelo that. on yeah, that like, pair. Yeah, I don't no. see that being the pair that wins the Stanley Cup. Like it would be wild if it was York, York and Sandheim was the second pair. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I just need like I need a badass next to Jamie Drysdale to really make my like okay that team can win. It, like right. there's just a lot of big question marks now. Yeah. Throwing goalie into that mix, it's like that to me more than anything is I, I hate it because I want Travis. He's a fucking flyer, man. I know. He's a flyer. I don't think the timeline works out. Like, the way Johnny Goudreau didn't fit our timeline, <laughs> I, TK might not. I, I hope it all works out, man. I, I would love for TK. I want, like, a long-tenured group. Like, we talked yeah. about yesterday with uh, Couturier. Yeah. Playing, being a top-10 all-time flyer. Like, I want some long-tenured dudes whose jerseys I want to buy. Like, know. you know, at least two stints, uh, Mark Recchi, <laughs> right. two different numbers. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I, I want guys who, like, we get to know and – become the next great Flyers team, I would love for TK to be a part of that. I, I, I just don't think it's in the cards. Do you think this is a deadline move or is this an off-season move? It's a deadline <sighs> move, right? You know, I, I've been thinking, because of the eligibility for the extension on July 1st, Yeah, maybe, like, that's a, that's a tough decision to make. Yeah. Put it on another team. Also... The return for a guy who's such a bargain at five and a half million, you're not just trading for him for one playoff run. Right, you get another one. You're getting one. him all next season yeah. and perhaps beyond because he's eligible for an extension the minute the offseason begins through your whole season. Yeah. So uh, I think it could make him more attractive to do it now. All along, I was like, oh, it's probably an offseason move. And that was also based on the way they were playing. Like, they're right. not going to trade this guy with a year yeah, left yeah. when they're playing well. Now, maybe they come out of the break and play great again. It also could be five turns to 10, and here we are a lot closer to the seventh pick than the 15th. <laughs> like, they're nine points yeah. away from the seventh pick. At least seventh to last place, you know. Uh, it's it's How tight. did that happen so fast? I don't like that. Because the entire East has the same record. There's the Boston Bruins, who are killing everybody. Uh, there's, like, three bad teams, and everyone else is basically 500. Like it's just the entire yeah. Eastern Conference has the same record. Uh, let me tell you real quick about, oh, this is a good one. I'm actually excited for this. Philly sports trips, man. Oh, this mm. is cool. Uh, so if you haven't heard yet, PHLY, they're taking over Clearwater. That's right. We're heading down to Florida. We're Ooh. off to Clearwater with Philly sports trips for our very first PHLY spring training takeover. On this trip, you get to hang with Philly's legend, Charlie Manuel. If you've never hung out with Charlie, it's a great freaking time. That might make it uh, That might make it worth your while just right there. Uh, Philly Sports Trips plans the whole experience out from flights and hotels to game tickets and transportation. All of it taken care of when you book with Philly Sports Trips. And this might be the, the – honestly, I've, oh, I've been to spring training a few times – Never over St. Patty's, though. You can spend St. Patrick's Day on a private yacht with a catered dinner and drinks what? on this trip. So be on the lookout for more events throughout the year with Philly sports trips. But our trip to uh, to Clearwater, March 13th to the 18th. So you're there for St. Patty's. Don't wait to book. Head to allphly.com slash events to learn more and book your trip. I might be booking a trip, man. This sounds... This is the one year Ava's not going to spring training, and um, I really want to go. This is annoying. I, I, I might have to take a dude's trip down. To, <laughs> I don't even baseball that hard, and I'm like, wait, on a Gotta, boat yeah. for St. Patrick's Day? Got to go for work, honey. Sorry. Yeah, so go to uh, allphly.com slash events. Book your trip with Philly Sports Trips. This is going to be a really freaking good time. Uh, I, I can't fun. wait for this. If you've never been to spring training, Haven't. it's really, really cool down there. You're like, oh, it's exhibition. Who cares about the games? Like, Nobody. You hang out. 
out at the tiki bar. You have a great time. You talk to all fans from everywhere. That's what baseball is and about, in my opinion. You have grouper sandwiches all over uh, Clearwater. They're delicious. It's the thing down there. And freaking catered yacht. On St. Patty's Day. Yes, please. I am being sold on this very easily. Absolutely. Am I in on this? Okay, let's get to, right. the, uh, to the TSN trade bait list. Mm. For our three flyers in the, uh, in the top 40, ni- none of uh, Scott Lawton, nope. neither. Um, TK. TK, yeah, nope. the guy we were just talking about <laughs> for 20 minutes, that one. Um, Sean Walker comes in at number four on the list. Elias Lindholm was on number one, so... Actually, you can move everyone up one. Yeah, right. Because two guys <laughs> so are number gone. three now, yeah. So Sean Walker is number three. Morgan Frost, I guess, goes from uh, 20 to 19. And Nick Sealer goes from 22 to 21. Sean Walker is, I mean, Charlie's article uh, where he sat down with Danny Briere. I keep saying uh, Danny Briere basically put the slap shot movie poster for sale sign in yeah. front of Sean Walker. Like, There's 0% chance. He will not be here past no. the trade deadline. That is almost a guarantee. Really hoping, really hoping they can get a first round pick out of that. I think they need to, the whole team needs to stop shitting the bed defensively. Yes. To keep this guy's value up. But <laughs> Very badly. I, I would be surprised if we didn't get a first for him. Uh, Nick Sealer, I'm surprised he's down at 22. I realize he's, he's not like a flashy a guy or anything. Yeah. But he's just like... To me, exactly what every team is looking for. Yeah. Like, that is the guy. That Oh, he blocks every shot. He, you know, he fought Nick Gloria yeah. a couple mm-hmm. years ago. He's a badass. He is exactly what teams are looking for in terms of defensive depth heading into the playoffs. Him at 22, I, I was surprised he wasn't a little higher, but obviously he's there. The one that stuck out to me at 20 was Morgan Frost. Just because, like, obviously it's not shocking to me that there's an idea that yeah. the Flyers are open to trading him. Like, the coach doesn't play him a lot. Like <laughs> He does, He likes not Although, playing him. That's changed. It, it has changed. And yeah. may, however, like, that also increases his value. It does. Like, oh, he's playing better now. And even John Tortorella might have changed his mind about him. <laughs> like, you know, uh, I'm not saying he's stubborn, but he comes off as a guy who it's hard to change his right. mind. <laughs> I would imagine. Uh, but... I just look at this list and like Sealer and Walker to me, that's the ultimate. Well, we're rebuilding, get whatever the hell you can for them. Yeah. Morgan Frost, though, I uh, I don't know what kind of futures you get for Frost. To me, that should be a more hockey of a trade. hockey trade. Yeah. Like maybe you get another team's Morgan Pro- Frost. Yeah, project. Like a, a guy who's in Owen the doghouse. Yeah, an Owen Tippett type mm-hmm. guy. Like someone who just hasn't really fully established themselves yet, maybe a year or two younger than Frost. But How old is Frost? 26? Uh, 25? 25? Yeah. So I'm like, remembering something. I, I'd be surprised if Morgan Frost gets traded at the deadline simply because how many teams are looking to subtract at that point. But I guess you could have said that about Florida, and it's like, well, Owen Tip is not an established guy, so who right. are we really subtracting? I, 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 would, I would be a little surprised. Like, Walker and Sealer won't shock me at all. No. You absolutely do that in a rebuild. Yeah. These guys get traded. But Morgan Frost, simply because of what I want the return to be, it's like, I, I don't know what kind of futures you get for him. So here's the thing also about Morgan Frost. Since he went into John Tortorella's office and took his shirt off and threatened to fight him, which is obviously what happened. It's clearly what happened. Um, he's been playing really, really well. Yeah. And he's kind of like, if this version of Morgan Frost that we've seen for the last month or so is like a perfect third line center, like perfect third line center. This team lacking centers all over, like really needs centers. And I feel like he fits the timeline. So at, th- at this point... If you had asked me three months ago, like, you have to trade Morgan Frost. Like, get him off of the team. He's never going to play here. Now it kind of looks like he fits perfectly. And so I don't know if I want him gone anymore. That on, brings though, me. We're being vindicated with your Danny <laughs> Briere comparison. It's coming true. It might be. It's happening. It really might be. Like, he might just be a late bloomer yes. who finally gets it. He and, was hurt for so long. And we're going to, like. I'm going back to last we're year. We're going to be Frost. vindicated, yeah. mm-hmm. maybe. I, I believe it's possible. He makes moves out there that I'm like, God damn. He's starting to get really creative, yeah. which is the sign of a confident guy. And that's what we wanted from him the whole time because that was his whole thing in juniors. Yeah. The thing that 
gives me pause, though. Mm -hmm. Number 37 on the TSN's trade bait list, Trevor Zegris. Trevor Zegris. That, to me, is the trade. I mean, it's not one for one. Uh, We're going to give up some other uh, probably pretty solid assets if if it's Morgan Frost and more uh, for Zegris. But that, to me, is the trade. I don't know why Anaheim would want Morgan Frost. I also... I don't know what they're doing over there. Yeah, like, I don't like, know what they're I doing. I also don't know why Anaheim does a lot of the things yeah, they do. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. So I, I just... I'm interested in that as a hockey trade, but I don't... Like, how much more? Like, Morgan yeah. Frost, a first, and what else? See, I don't... I don't want to... When I think of, like, what this team needs... I don't want to give up Morgan Frost and a first for Trevor Zegras because I feel like we need a center and a first round pick for where this team is right now more than we need Trevor Zegras's potentially fun goal scoring, which I don't, obviously I don't watch a lot of Ducks games because I go to sleep at 8 p.m. But from what I understand, Zegras is kind of like not as good, I think, as we think he is if, just because we only see the highlights. Yeah, like if you're a highlight person and you wa- like, yeah. oh, he's on the cover of NHL. Like, right. Yeah, he's like, he is a personality star. And does highlight real a, things. He's a 60-ish point guy. Right. Now, he's a 60-ish point guy in his early 20s. Like, he could become the 90-point yeah. guy. True. And the fact that he hasn't taken that step yet is why he's on this trade bait mm-hmm. list at his age. Um, I just, like... Right now, the Florida pick, I think, is going to be in the 30s. Yeah. Like, yeah that, I, I, I just bet Florida to – I bet an exact Vancouver, Florida. Did you? Um, oh, final boy. Uh, today. I, I, I bet a lot of Vancouver. Been I'll talking to RG3 you. about it. <laughs> I'm, RG3, I'm RG3. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not RG3. Um, uh, like, I, I just want him. <laughs> mm. More than anything right now, it's like the sexy name. Like he's friends with I mean, Drysdale. Yeah. I, I want Anaheim. I want this to be our Richards and Carter. No, I want to, t- instead of us giving up Richards and Carter, I want get, us to take someone else. Okay. Like that's what I want. See, I, <laughs> I want to be the team that benefits from some other team giving up on a young guy too soon. Are you describing it like this because you know that's going to get me in? Because it's working. Yes, that is exactly why I put it this way because I know that you you love Richards and Carter as much as I do. I mean, I but wouldn't I mean, just hate the idea it. that like they're Sharp and Williams. Like we're mm. always the team that loses these guys. Yeah, I want to be the team that gets those dudes. Now you could argue that like Morgan Frost is that for us. If we give up on him, we'll be yeah. looking at them like, oh, there's the next Patrick Sharp. They let it happen again. But, like, if we get Zegers out of it, I don't think it's that bad no, of a deal. No, it's really not. And But the thing is, like, it all of it depends on if Zegers could be like Travis Konechny and thrive under John Tortorella. Now, do I think that John Tortorella hates Trevor Zegers because he watched him score Michigan one time and he made a comment on it when he was eating chicken parm or whatever? Like, I don't think he does. Um, and I think that... Zegers would have the same opportunity as every other player to prove that as long as you're doing the tort stuff, you can go ahead and try every Michigan you want to because you're doing the things that I, mean, I want you to. Someone just tried it the other day. Like Joe Faraby yeah. attempted it the other day. Right, because torts isn't as bad as we think he or we thought he was. And that's, be. But like, if Zegers hasn't taken this step yet, Maybe there is an element of his game that needs a kick in the ass. Yeah. And if but John Tortorella is it? able to get that out of him, yeah. then you do have that guy. Right. Like, will he be Travis Konechny or will he be Kevin Hayes? Like, who's to say? But, I mean, like, <laughs> it's a he's there with all of his bros, so, like, maybe that'll help. Like, we're just going to make, yeah, a team full of dumb idiots Yeah, like him and Cam York are pals. Yeah, York and Drysdale and Zegers. Uh, I think they're got to be besties, involved with that sure. somehow, right? Yeah. They're, right? So. I, w- I, I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't. Let's no, put it that way. It, it, there's nothing to hate there. Mm-mm. It's just, it's a, it's a, I think it's a bigger risk than people assume because, yes. like, oh, it's Trevor Z. Oh, he's a star. Like, well, he could be. Maybe. He's really good. But, but also, he's not there yet. You yeah. Know? If he was that good, he wouldn't be on the trade block. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let me take a quick second to tell you about our friends at Bagels and Company, the Ooh. best Brooklyn style bagels made right here with Philly love. Uh, huge bagels. That's the first thing you got to know about Bagels and Co. 
you watched me eat one on the Reading Terminal show. We had them actually here free. I didn't even know until we were on the way out yesterday. I was like, oh, I grabbed a blueberry bagel. Uh, it was freaking delicious. Uh, I, I ate it just like cold bagel on the way home. Like, this is out, this is outstanding. <laughs> Uh, really enjoyed it. <laughs> Huge bagels uh, made right here in Philly. That's the first thing you have to know. And when the variety at this place, 15 to 20 different types to choose from daily. You're not just getting, okay, there's a plane and everything and nothing else. No, the, the number of bagels we had just on a tray in here yesterday, there's like six, seven different types. And this is after right. the entire station, like picked <laughs> through them first. I was the last one to realize these bagels were here apparently. And when you have that big a selection of bagels, you need a big selection of cream cheese. 30 different flavors of cream cheeses. I've told you about the seasonal uh, and the sports-inspired cream cheeses. If you're having an office party, maybe you're doing a little tailgate or a get-together uh, for the big game coming up. Uh, get something a little different. You know, everyone does the pretzels. Everyone does the chicken nuggets. Like, get, get the bagel tray with some different fun cream cheeses as well. But the most important thing, bagels and company... They're an affordable brand. You get a lot of food for cheap. Who doesn't need that? I know I certainly do. So for the best Brooklyn-style bagels made right here in Philly, head to thebagelsandco.com slash store-locator to find the closest bagels and company near you. All right, I think it's time to get to some mailbag questions, Kelly. Let's do it. Uh, of course, it is Thursday, so Mailbag Monday continues. Mm -hmm. um, it will continue forever. It is perpetually Mailbag Days are Monday. Fake. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, they're not real. In the first you know, on Monday, we answered one question. We answered one go. mailbag question on Monday. Still counts, and it's increased every day since. We're gonna lead things off with a uh, Flyers fan thirty nine, and this is something we hinted at a little bit. Mm -hmm. But do you think twenty one is declining? And if so, when should we cut ties? I'd like to think he isn't declining, and this is just a bad year. Yeah. However, he plays a style of hockey. Uh, very dependent on energy and physicality, mixing it up, yeah. emotion. Yeah. I'm not going to compare him to Mike Richards because we did that when he was drafted, and he's not that. No. But guys who play more of a cannonball out there style have a chance to kind of hit their yeah. hit their wall before a a Claude Giroux who it's like, well, I can make skilled plays on 38. You know, like. I, it's definitely possible. He could just be in decline. Yeah. we. That's the thing. Like, we don't know. Like, is it possible that he bounces back next season? Sure. It's possible. Is it possible that he looks even worse? Yeah. That's possible, too. And we don't know. So if someone comes along and wants to give you some good stuff for Scott Lawton, you kind of have to take it. Because it's too chancy and the futures, I think, right now – are what the team needs. You can't really turn them down, in my opinion. No. No, that's... And, like, if we don't know the answer to the question, it's like, well, uh, what's the... Even if Scott Lawton bounces back, what did you really give up on? Right. Like, Is, he's not going to... He's not a game changer. No. He, no. If, if you're worried about what he's going to be, then, like... You have way bigger issues right. in your organization. Yeah. So uh, is he in decline? Eh, maybe. maybe. But I think Don't now know. is the time to try to cash in on whatever you can get for Scott right. Lawton. It might not be what we thought it was going to be, you know, a few months ago. Also could be. But it could be. Like, Tampa gave up a first-round pick for Tanner Janot. Like, teams do dumb shit all the time. Sure do. Um, at 3 Slim has our next question. This is, this is the one that uh, annoyed right. you. Yes. Other than trading Provorov, what has the team done to convince you they're actually rebuilding mm -hmm. and not just talking about it? Okay, so respectively, uh, respectfully, excuse me, <laughs> what else, uh, what could they have done here mid-season to prove to you that they're doing a rebuild? Like what, because they keep saying it over and over again. No one makes trades during the season, hardly ever. So like what what were they meant to do to convince you? I guess people, like we just talked about with Scott Lawton, if you were really offered a first-round pick for Scott Lawton at the draft, not taking that is asinine. I, I feel like last summer, though, coming off the year that he had, you can make the argument to yourself that keeping him is more valuable to the rebuild than trading him. And That's a logical argument that could have been made. It's not crazy. I will say, if we're talking about the draft, 
They just took someone in the first round with the seventh overall pick who ain't going to be here till right. 2026. Exactly. Like that, I think, is the dead giveaway. They also attempted to trade Travis Sanheim. He would not be here if not for Tory Krug's no trade clause. Yeah. Like, I, you Kevin know, they Hayes. dumped Kevin Hayes. I think that's more that's it. more of a culture move than yeah. anything. Yes. Kind of break up the locker room a little bit. Um, but it's – the reason I think it's not a bad question is – they do have to do more things, like, starting now. Well, like, the rest of... Like, trading Gauthier, that's not... But getting a 21-year-old defenseman back who was the sixth overall pick good. a few years ago, like, that's good. I don't know if it's so much a rebuild move as just, like, we need the best return we can. It was or a shrewd people move, are gonna given the situation. things at us. Yeah, like, right. it's just the trade they had to make. Yeah. Um, but they do have to do some things between now and I think it's March 8th, Friday, March 8th is the trade deadline. Yeah. Like between now and then we will, they will prove right. how committed they are to this rebuild. Yes. What happens at and in the weeks leading up to the deadline is important to answering this question, but there's literally no reason for us to believe that, Everyone in the front office is lying to us for reasons and that they're not going to make the moves they've said out loud that they're going to make. The saying it out loud to me is kind of a huge deal. Like, obviously, it's just words, but like with the way the team was rolling, they could have very easily just like stepped back and been like, "Ooh, let's see what happens. But they even then were like, nah, we're still trading, guys. So just get ready for that. Yeah. And I think that like. Until, I've said this a thousand times, until Danny Breer shows me that he's not doing a good job at this, I have no reason to believe he's not doing a good job at this. And so far, not a single thing. And like, trading Ivan Provorov, like other than trading Pro, like that's a big deal. That is a huge deal. <laughs> the and dude the, played and 26 the, minutes a night for The this way team. that the trade was structured and the things that he took back, like he took on contracts. Yeah, like, like he The did, Cal Peterson contract, right. taking that back. Like that's that was a, a full, that was a full on rebuild yeah. trade, 100%. And given that that was the first thing that he did pretty much as general manager, like, I don't know what more you want from these people. I understand you're an I I think it's stop it. Things it's are a good. bit fair of a question, but also there is the nobody makes trades in November and December thing. No. It, it just doesn't really happen. Never. Um this one I just want to read his name. Paul with the great car ideas. What does the rest of the season look like for it to still be considered a success? I don't mean the whole season, I mean specifically the remainder. Personally, I'm more concerned with how we play than the record itself. I can accept if we, you know, lose five in a row if each game looks like the Tampa one. And or the uh, Colorado like, yeah, game. Yeah, the Colorado game also I think good. was the perfect yeah. like perfect loss. Yeah. Nathan McKinnon, he's gonna be the MVP. Yeah. You know, he's and ridiculous. he went MVP. And Kucherov's probably gonna be the runner up. Yeah. And he went nuts in the Tampa. Like yeah. those are kind of I, I get where he's going with that. And yet it is the effort and the way they play and making sure everyone's still committed to the John Tortorella plan, mm -hmm. like that is the most important thing. Yeah. The record matters to me just in that a prolonged losing streak will make the last six weeks of this season meaningless. And, and I stinks. do not want that. Like yeah. that to me, like, okay, now the, oh, cool. Like Morgan Frost had a three point game. Like I don't care. It's a fake game. Yeah. This doesn't allow me to evaluate someone the way a game down the stretch that means something does mm -hmm. where the other team isn't overlooking it because they need it. And you are like, we need this. We're giving it a hundred percent. Yeah. So I, that's what success looks like to me. Staying in this thing and when April begins, it's like season ain't over. Yeah. And I, I know the tankers don't like to consider this, but playing really well and winning games, I think seems to be important to the rebuild effort. Like these guys playing in a bunch of meaningful games for the entire length of the season and really making a push for the playoffs. And even, even if they sneak in and they get swept in the first round, like, if they are learning how to win, like, I'm, I hate stuff like that, but, like, really learning how to win. Young teams don't win in this league. No. They don't really win in any sport. Like, <laughs> we hold teams like uh, like uh, the Oilers <laughs> and the Maple Leafs to this standard because they're superstar-laden right. teams, and you just expect them to dominate. Yeah. And it's like... Guys win when they're 28, 29, 30. Yeah. They don't win at this age. It's, it's very... 
it, like learning the steps and what mm -hmm. it takes along the way. And so you're not overwhelmed the first time you actually have like expectations, mm -hmm. I think is important. Yeah. Having really great players is the most important thing. Obviously. But like all the other shit, we wouldn't hear so much about it if it wasn't at least a little true. Yeah. Like learning to win is a thing. And there's that stupid, I mean, who I, I doubt it's even true, but we've heard it so many times in hockey lore, it is true. When the Oilers lose to the Islanders mm. in the, the Gretzky Oilers mm -hmm. in the uh, Stanley Cup final. And they're like, you know, uh, it's Gretzky and Messier walking by the uh, Islanders locker room and they look in and it's not a party. Everyone's covered in ice bags. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first of all, it's not fucking true. <laughs> uh, it's it it's hockey. Like, they were definitely partying. <laughs> but the idea of this, maybe they were partying with ice bags taped to yeah. them. But, like, the idea, like, that's what it takes. You're going to play fucking hurt. Yeah. You're going to have to, you're basically going to have to put your life on the line to win the Stanley Cup. Like, we just, Gabriel Landeskog is never going to be the same because he played through those playoffs. Like, it, it, they're, talk, they're talking about he's going to come back and it's kind of a miracle. Yeah. Like, learning that stuff early makes it so that hopefully you don't have this when the team is in their prime. Right. It's, oh, well, we wasted those years because we didn't know what to do. I, I would agree that the effort for me is more important than the result because here's the thing. if It's going to be hard for this team because we saw what happened. What happens, I should say, when the way that you win hockey games is by outworking the other team. It makes you real run down. The team has looked defeated over the last few games, I think mostly because they had nothing left in the tank. Yeah. It's very likely that if they do continue to win and they are pushing for a playoff spot, they're going to run out of gas again at the end because it's going to be really tough for them. They got to beat teams that are better than them on paper, and the only way they do it is by outworking them. But for me, like, people are going to hate this, but if they are playing the way that we saw them play – during the hot streak, and they just miss, I'm still going to be like, you know what? They really fucking went for it. Yeah. They were playing great hockey. They did the best they possibly could, and they almost got there. And that's good because I need all of these players to be the kind of players that can get to the playoffs. Like, they have to be those players. And if this is going to turn them into that, that's fine. Like, I know it sucks that we're going to pick, like, 15th or whatever. I get it. But also, draft picks or lottery tickets. William Gauthier is not a flyer. <laughs> Nolan Patrick is not a flyer. It doesn't always matter. Happy Mishkov is. Please, no, 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 don't speak it into existence. <laughs> In I, Russia, yeah, you know, I, yeah, so, I just don't know what goes on over there. Yeah, like, let these guys turn into badass hockey players that win hockey games. Like, this is good for the rebuild. It's not all about draft picks. That's not the only thing. But, and that's, like, I want the players on the ice and the coach to go for it. I also want Danny Briere to extract as much value from the rest oh, of the I league think as he can. Both of those like, things are going to happen. Both things can yeah. happen in tandem. Mm -hmm. Now it might hurt the team on the ice, yeah. and that might push them out of it. But they can still try. But like, good. <laughs> then yeah. they get a better draft pick. Right. But they're also like, you know, it's they have to thread a very fine needle here. Yeah. But if it works, it's a fucking awesome plan. <laughs> it's a really fun plan for fans. It just might be more difficult to pull off. That said, and I know I use this as an example all the time, Buffalo has had 10 consecutive top 10 yes. picks. They haven't been to the playoffs since Mike Richards eliminated them in 2011. It's not the way, it's not like the it's, key. There's not a, yes, you do need those upper echelon guys, but they're not even a guarantee. Also, like, I, I think Colorado only had two top five picks. And a bunch of their guys, like... Tampa, think, I'm pretty sure, only had yeah, one or like two top Kucherov five picks. Finding Kucherov in the third yeah, round, that's point the thing, in the second. Like, that's what you got to do. Those are real important. Yes. It's not... It's just the idea that getting the high draft picks is the only way to guarantee a rebuild works is nonsense. It's not the case. Vegas traded for Eichel signed free agent Petrangelo. They don't win without those. Like, right. Those are very important things. Yeah. Is it a lot easier if you draft Nathan McKinnon? Sure. But you're not always going to be able to. And even when you do draft high, sometimes it doesn't fucking work out. And it was, I think it was last year, Nathan McKinnon in the off season, or before they won the cup a couple seasons ago, he said, I'm going into year seven and I haven't won shit yet. Yeah. Like, 
it takes a while. Yeah. It takes a lot of different pieces on top of those awesome and, players. And the, what got Colorado to winning the cup was not just having Nathan McKinnon. Otherwise, they would have won it years ago. Yeah. They needed a whole bunch of other pieces, and they didn't get and look all at of the those high pieces end, through the draft. Look at the high-end guys they've moved on from mm-hmm. leading up to this. Ryan O'Reilly, uh, Matt Duchesne. Like, they've had a lot of subtractions over that time yes. as well and like to, in order to balance things. Yeah. Um, Oh, the, I've been saving this one. I was, I'm was. i glad I got to it while you were uh, here because it's a fun one. Okay. From Aiden M., uh, if you could give one Flyers prospect from any era who didn't work out in the NHL for whatever reason, lists Nolan Patrick, Oscar Lindblom, Eric Wellwood, Jason Atkinson, if you could give them a do-over on this team, who would it be? <sighs> like So many. I mean, yeah, all of them. Um, right. Oscar Lindblom oh, is a, a great one. just because, God damn. He was looking so good. Like, led the team in goals. And then it's like, yeah, he's got uh, cancer. Yeah. Like, no one ever just breaks their arm in this organization. It's always fucking something That's, ridiculous. I'm telling you. Like, uh, so Oscar Lindblom is the uh, probably the sentimental pick for me. I was just looking in my class. I forgot I, we're going to talk about jerseys probably tomorrow at this yeah. point. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> I bought a reverse retro those first ones, Oscar Lindblom. Yeah, I was like, it was him or Kevin Hayes, and I was oh. like, ah, I think I just I think I just like Lindblom more. It's like, well, now they're both gone. <laughs> uh, but like, he's a good one. Uh, I have a few more. Who would you want to give the? So uh, I reached all the way back into the vault inside of my mind <laughs> to the early two thousands Phantoms, and there is a guy that they had that was a high draft pick who had. A lot of hype. And I really thought he was going to be something for the Flyers. Jeff Wojwitka. I really thought he was going to be something. I remember creating him in a game. Yeah. Like, after I heard about him. He was, like, real. He was like super hyped up. Like, remember when Braden Shen was, like, best player not in the NHL? Yeah, he was like that. He was, like, hyped up. And I really thought he was going to be something. And he turned out to be absolutely nothing. Just barely played and never played for the Flyers, I don't think he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just... Former third round pick. Remember Mark Andre Bordone? Mm. He looked like he was really going to be something. Played forty five games, got hurt. I think was he the concussions? He just had like multiple concussions I, and never are rebounded. You of or was that Ryan Laberge? Are you thinking Pascal of- Laberge never played in the NHL? Oh no, 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 yeah, you're right. He didn't. Yeah, he did get a lot of concussions. Uh, I don't think Ryan. I think it was. It Bordone. might have been Bordone. Like I always looked at him. I always think of the Phantoms guys from when I was a kid as yes. prospects, but like they weren't prospects. They were no. all twenty seven years old right, playing right, in right. the AHL because yeah, yeah, yeah. the AHL at that point for the Flyers was just like another way to make money. Yeah, like let's get all these dudes who can score fifty down here and uh, <laughs> it few fighters. Well. Like it was a good time <laughs> and sell a bunch of tickets to something for kids because no one can afford to go to Flyers games. Yeah, but there was like like Ben Eager. I was kind of hoping like he was crazy good in juniors. I remember I went on once um, back in that era. I went on like a little Canadian junior hockey road trip with a friend of mine. And we went to Oshawa where Eager had played and his face was on the side of the bus. <laughs> like he was a big deal. And I really uh, thought he was going to turn into something. And he kind of just was just a guy. Now he had a pretty, I won't say decent, but like, Spent more time in the NHL than maybe this list you would think. I guess technically but, he made it. No, in the my NHL. guy uh, Zach Ronaldo. Remember those couple of weeks where they were trying to like make him something? Yeah, like he's gonna play on the third. Like he's with Sean Couturier now. Uh, he's on the penalty kill. They tried. Like real when hard. they were try, I wanted that so bad. I, like if he could just. Be awesome to like just be kind of serviceable, like yeah. an Aaron Asham kind of guy. Oh, yeah. Like Aaron Asham played like ten years. I know. Like if Zach Ronaldo could have been like that and chipped in a goal, that would have been would have really been cool. Yeah. But I just don't know if he. Uh, my guy Tyrell Goldborn. Mm. <laughs> I made them call him up. <laughs> uh, amazing first shift uh, that hit against the Bruins that led to I think a Scott Lawton goal. Uh, but that was pretty much it for for Goldborn. Uh, that's a good. I mean, just there's so many. I got the 2003 Phantoms is, up, and there's just so many. Is the is the is the direction of the entire franchise different if it's Nolan Patrick here? Um, like how different are things if he's what he's supposed to be? You have to wonder if they would have admitted that they needed a rebuild. Probably not. Probably not, right? And like, if the team's better because Nolan Patrick is what he was supposed to be. 
does anybody ever get fired? Like all of the people that needed to get fired, Hextel needed to get fired. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's a very butterfly effect thing because so many things have yeah. happened since that happened. Um, I don't know. The thing is like, I wonder because Hextall was so bad at adding NHL talent. Like yeah. what would he have done around Nolan Patrick to like, like, build a him, winning team? I don't know. You have him and Couturier down the middle and I guess Kevin Hayes. Yeah. Or no, Hayes is, that's Chuck Fletcher, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was so, Fletcher. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know either. <laughs> no idea. It would have been fun to find right. out. Uh, a couple here more here. And Eric Wellwood, I think. Just I think everybody he, really wanted to see. Everyone just wanted to see. Like, can we so please fast. just see this guy? And of course, the like fastest skater we've ever had. Oh, yeah, he had his Achilles sliced. Yeah. That's not good for not you. Not good. Uh, so that, like, him, that would just be awesome if that That's never happened. Yeah. You know, that sucks. All right. Uh, a couple more here from Brett Smith. Any chance the Flyers get a young center with upside in the Walker deal instead of a first round pick? Uh, and who would be a possible target? I don't think so. I think. Like, when we talked about Morgan Frost, like, I want that. Yeah. I think that would have to be more of a hockey trade. Yeah. Like, maybe that would be the one. Um, but Walker, I think, is a futures deal. Yeah, one. he's 100% like a classic deadline deal where a team that's going for it that just needs a couple of backup pieces and is like, I don't give a fuck about our number 31 overall pick. Just take that. We need this guy. Like, that's the kind of trade this is going to be. And uh, finally, from K-Red... I just want to know how the show is going. Uh, you this guys, is so nice. are you guys pleased with engagement so far? Is all city satisfied? I've become rather invested in the various shows on PHLY and K Red. He's a regular commenter. He's always so in nice. our, yeah. always. So I really appreciated that question. Uh, the show's going great, man. Things are going really well. I was just talking to the bosses before the show. Everyone is definitely pleased. I think uh, you all probably have noticed an uptick in the amount of ad reads now. Sometimes that's not the like people. I, I know you don't want to listen to ads. I listen to plenty of podcasts, but it is also a sign that things are going well for us and you can expect more and more content from us and you don't have to pay us for those things. So that's always good. Yeah. Uh, but do become a diehard member. <laughs> um, so uh, no, but things are going great and we really appreciate uh, anyone who's invested in what the hell we're doing because this is freaking awesome, man. A guy of my dream job. Seriously. Um, so we'll talk about the guys. skills competition tomorrow. We will do our five worst jerseys in Philly history tomorrow. I have some, I have some. Go Kelly went a little outside the box here, uh, so we'll we'll get into that. And JP, I believe, will be back tomorrow, so we'll get a list from him as well. But that will just about do it on PHLY Flyers today. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you for hanging out. If you haven't already, you got to hit that subscribe button. Search PHLY Flyers wherever there are podcasts. Of course, the YouTube page uh, right here where you're watching us live. If you are, set your reminders so you never miss a live show or a post game or anything uh, we put up on the YouTube and, oh yeah, Twitter, at PHLY underscore Flyers. Uh, this show has been presented by Mortgage CS. Check out MortgageCS.com slash PHLY to start your home buying process today. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. My name is Bill Matz. That's Kelly Hinkle. Have a great Thursday, Philly. We all city like the mayor. 